Welcome back to some of the best stories from r slash tales from tech support. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. And now let's take a look at the first story. It's called Too Good. I worked for an on-site company, think big box retailers on-site support, but a smaller operation and generally more experienced techs. We dabbled in both consumer and business support. After a few months working there, I got called into a meeting between me, the boss and his wife, the co-owner. My satisfaction ratings are through the roof. They are sending me on more problem cases because they know I'm getting it done. But there's a problem. According to the wife, I'm not billing enough. If I go out for a virus removal, I'm billing for an hour. Well, my coworker usually bills for four plus hours. We need you to start billing more. How do I do that? Well, we'll have you go on a ride or two with your coworker and see what he does. He doesn't do anything I don't do. It just takes him twice as long to troubleshoot and figure out the solution, since he's only been doing this for a little while and I've got more experience. Well, he's doing a great job. He built 30 hours last week. You built 16. So you want me to work slower or something? Blunder around a bit and pretend I'm troubleshooting? The boss said, no, we'd never ask you to do that. But his wife had other ideas. Yes, I'm extremely uncomfortable with billing people like that. Why don't I do a ride with boss and see how he builds so much? I already knew the answer. They sent boss to the more complicated jobs. So instead of going on one of his tickets, I grabbed one of mine, asked him if he'd tutor me on it. He agreed. I grabbed the next ticket in my queue. I'd already worked with the receptionists on how to take care of the smaller issues that weren't worth going out on. This one seemed to have fallen through the cracks though, so off we were. We arrived at the customer's house about a half hour later, walked up to the door, rang the bell and customer answered. I'd already been there a few times. She was a sweet old lady, friendly, but you could tell she wasn't the type that was going to spend a half hour chatting about what not. Hello customer, I'm here shadowing my boss so he can show me a bit of the ropes today and give me some pointers. I let him take over. The boss tried to be super charming. Hey there. So, what seems to be the problem? Oh, I just bought this new printer cartridge. I installed it, but I can't print at all. Oh no. Well, I'll have a look and we'll get you printing in no time. I know what the problem is. The boss was fiddling with driver settings. And that is, he didn't usually take these kinds of calls. So probably was unaware. There's a piece of plastic over the print nozzle. Happens all the time. Boss takes out the cartridge, looks at the nozzle, and sure enough, there's a piece of plastic over it. He takes it off and look, it's printing now. I told him they started doing that a while ago. Now we get these calls about once a week. Well, okay, all fixed. Anything else we can do, customer? No, I'm all set. What's my total? $67. Cash or check, please. I talked with my boss and asked him how he'd build four hours for that. I left a bit later for greener pastures. The next story is called Not Expensive Enough. I was working in IT in the early 2000s. I had cleaned up the company's core network, getting rid of the slow hubs. And now the company realized it was time to tackle the big enchilada, the ERP system, the setup in which stupid decisions are made. This system was critical. Through it ran all the company's financials, HR, shipping, parts processing, etc. It quite literally ran on a system that was the size of a washer and dryer set and was so old it didn't even support as a steady parade of tech. Well, one tech that still understood it came by to service the line printer, the tape drive, etc. A committee for evaluating replacements was formed. After sitting through presentations by various sleazy ERP salespeople, a product was duly chosen. As luck would have it, the consultants that sold and installed the product also sold and installed hardware. And the company's hardware they sold? IBM. The consultants duly produced a crowd for a 25k server. It was nothing special. A regular rack mount job would rate. The sort of thing that one would have gotten for 10k or less from Dell or HP. It was going to run Linux. I knew Linux but thought we were getting ripped off. Q conversation at a committee meeting, which somehow I managed to attend. I'm concerned about the price. My manager said, 
I know. Can you really get quality for only 25k? The VP? Right, our last server cost over 200k. We could have the same for 10k. The consultant sees us both going down the toilet and gives me the evil eye. The manager said, what if we got two? Then we'd have a backup. The consultant starts to look excited. The VP said, that's still only 50k. Are we sure we are not buying something so cheap it's dodgy? Now the consultant starts to look very excited. He said, you know, we're an IBM reseller. We could sell you an AI Xbox. It's like what you are used to. The consultants still provide a quote. They clearly put everything they possibly could into it, plus a generous profit margin, 80k. Managers are still concerned that it's too cheap, so they add a separate this expansion shelf to bring it up to 100k. I told them, nobody here knows AIX. And the consultant countered, you are good with Linux, we'll train you, for free even. The VP said, that's a great deal, where do we sign? Which would have been fine, if the consultants actually had anyone that knew AIX. The AIX equipment duly arrives, followed by our consultant to do the install. This isn't the sales guy consultant, this is the nerdy consultant, so I'll just install this then. Great, I busy myself with the tasks of the day. Nerd makes grunting noises as he struggles with the latch on the rack door, the rails, the server, the power, the install CD-ROM. After much effort and a few calls to tech support, he seems to have managed to configure something or other. I'm all done. You haven't asked me about the printer setup. It needs printer access. Oh, right. Tell me about these printers. I'll give him some information. Correct even. Muttering ensues. For hours. So, how it's coming? Would you believe it? They redid how they do printers in AIX5. On AIX4 it was, uh, somewhere else. And you have 5. I can't even find where it is in the menu. You've spent all afternoon not configuring the printers? Oh, don't worry. I've got a hotel room. I'll be back tomorrow. Hilarious. Eventually, I, not nerd, set up the printers. The application is duly installed. Migrations occur. Rejoicing happens. Consultants leave. More rejoicing happens. Etc. Then one day, the amber lamp of doom shows up on the system. What is this? Through various phone calls and twisty little menus, all alike, we arrive at the conclusion. A disk in the raid has failed. For about the 20th time that week, I was again thinking, this would have been so much simpler on a 10k Linux box. IBM duly dispatches an engineer with a hard drive. The engineer arrives. Which drive is bad? If I know. It took me two hours just to find out that the problem is a bad drive. I can't replace the drive unless I know which one. I was hoping you could figure that out. Since you are from, you know, the people that made this thing. That's not my job. But as a favor to you, I see what I can do. The engineer calls support. An hour long conversation, involving many more twisty little menus ensued, while I eavesdropped and took notes for the future. Eventually, the detective drive was identified and replaced. All done. Sign here. I told him, but the ember light is still on. It's supposed to do that. I hate it when they say that. That light was never on until the drive failed. I know. You have to reset the lamp. How? I don't know. Sign here. Also, there's no activity on the new drive. You have to trigger a RAID rebuild. I hesitate to ask, but how? I don't know. Sign here. Multiple escalations occur at this point. Since nobody in AIX support has any idea how to repair a degraded RAID. Eventually, some hours later, the RAID is rebuilt and the amber lamp of doom extinguishes. Two years later, I managed to convince management to let me build a 10k Linux box. User complaints were way down after that, because it was much faster and more reliable. My manager said, wow, technology is so amazing. Two years ago, we had to pay 10 times as much for this. I didn't know what to say. The last story is called Making His Christmas. At the time, I was a tier 3 technician for a national telecom company that has since been bought out by another, larger company. Tier 3 was the highest they had. After my group, it went to people who worked on global switch settings or manufacturers. Field techs were paid by the job. Oftentimes, shortcuts were made, because the more jobs they worked, the larger their paychecks. With increased shortcuts came increased errors. A field tech typically worked about 3-4 issues a day. 
I received a call from a field tech that was having problems with troubleshooting a customer's issue. It doesn't make sense. Everything checked out fine with the previous tech I talked to. Everything is provisioned fine on the line. It won't receive calls. I checked all the notes on the account. There was a large ticket history. This customer has had non-stop problems since install. It happens. Shortcuts and all. But something jumped out at me. Can't make calls? Okay, could be anything. Wrong name on outbound caller ID? Simple database update. Can't receive calls? Porting issue? Wrong number on outbound caller ID? Wait a second. That last one was simply not possible. In fact, the ticket was closed as customer education, informing them it was not possible. But I am not one to let possibilities limit my troubleshooting. Okay, field tech, can you annex that number for me? Sure. One moment. Annex stands for automatic number announcement circuit. Every telecom has them. They are kind of a loopback test. You call the number and an automated recording tells you what number just called it. It says 555-123-4588. I am showing the customer should have 555-123-4554. What does the customer believe they have? Customer states their number should be 4554. Is this a MDU setup? Yes it is. A MDU is a multi-dweller unit. It is basically a big series of punch blocks. Used for apartment complexes and to such. I didn't recognize it as one wide array, due to each apartment having its own house number. One moment, let me check something. I pulled up the queue and filtered on possible issues at that apartment complex. There were quite a few. All strange issues that should have been resolved the first time. All completely unrelated. No dial tone, can't receive calls, can't make calls, caller ID issues, feature issues. I suddenly saw the pattern. Field tech. I need to perform a full audit of the complex. I need every line on the punch block traced to what apartment they go to. And every line annexed from the punch block. Can you help me with that? What? No way. That is way too much work for a simple ticket. I need to hammer out jobs fast. Christmas is coming. I've got a family to think about. I need you to trust me. To fix this properly and prevent return visits. This really needs to get done. Who can I talk to? I need to make this happen. If my manager okays it, I will proceed. But I am not happy about this. Not one bit. Let me give him a call. The manager wasn't going to have it either. I can't approve this. We are behind on truck rolls. So, this will decrease your truck roll queue significantly. Well, I'm not going to risk that. I want definites. Each ticket is a truck roll. This will clear dozens of tickets out of the queue. If you feel that strongly about it, call the director. I don't want to be the one making that call. No problem, calling him now. I personally thought the manager felt I was bluffing, but I wasn't. So, you feel we can fix that MDU unit by getting this done? It has been a problem since we inherited it from some company we bought. Yes sir, I do believe I found the problem. And will clear every ticket out of the queue for the entire complex. Very well. I trust you. I make it happen. Yes, he said MDU unit, which is redundant. That last part put a smile on my face. I was building up a pretty good reputation with some of the right people. The manager said, I just talked to director and then called field tech. He will call you back directly as soon as he is done. Thank you. You won't regret this. It doesn't matter now, does it? Anyway, I hope you are right. Two hours passed and I received a call from field tech. The field tech sounded defeated. Okay, all the work is done. I even labeled the wires to each apartment. I documented it all on this paper. I can fax it to you now if you like, please. The fax number is 777-555-1234. I waited a minute. Okay, got it. Perfect. This is exactly what I needed. Have you taken your lunch yet? The field tech was surprised. What? Uh, no. Okay, please take a lunch. Relax. You've earned it. Be back at the punch block in one hour. I will call you then. Okay? Talk to you then. Now that I had full documentation on what reality was, I went through the various systems and corrected everything needed. First I had to play a little of musical phone lines. I started with what was physically connected and changed the line equipment number to match what line card it was attached to. Then a quick audit of the features on the line. In most cases they were exactly what the customer had ordered. It just wasn't physically connected to their apartment. Now they were. This fix resolved 99% of the issues at the complex. 
The report field tech faxed over did mention one line was not attached to anything. It was dangling loose. I will need field tech to fix that. I finished a little early and grabbed a cup of coffee. At the designated time, I called field tech back. Did you have a nice lunch? Yeah, found a decent deli out here. Why do I get the feeling I have a ton more work to do? Well, I do have some work that needs to get done. Okay, let's hear it. Alright, the dangling wire from apartment 123. You had it listed separately on the chart you sent me. Yeah, that's right in front of me. Okay, punch that down into port 6. Okay, pause, done. I performed a quick check, made sure everything tested good. Alright, for the next part, do you have a pen and paper handy? Got some information that needs to be written down. Yeah, was prepared for that. I started rattling off ticket numbers in a slow, methodological manner. In the end, I had given him 30 or so ticket numbers. Okay, done with that. You got them all down? Yeah, what are all those numbers for? I will admit, I had a big old grin when I said the next thing. Those are all the ticket numbers you just helped resolve. And I flagged you as the tech responsible for the field work. Wait, what? You just resolved 30 truck roads today. That was about a week and a half of work there. In one day, just after lunch. Are you kidding me? No, I am very serious. If you'd like me to, I can give manager a call to inform him of your assistance. No, that's okay. He'll see the report. I'm so sorry for being angry with you earlier. It's okay. Given the circumstances, I would be as well. I saw a pattern. I needed help retesting my theory. Seriously? All this over a theory? Are you regretting it? No way, man. Thanks again. I can't wait to tell the family about this. And that is how you make a field text Christmas. Thanks for watching the video to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. Also, if you want to support me further, check out the channel membership or Patreon. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.